Hi, I'm Jeff Coxwell. Today at Go Parallel, we're going to explore how to determine at runtime what processor capabilities are present, particularly what SIMD capabilities you can use. Uh, when you compile a C or C++ program, you can tell the compiler to generate code for a particular architecture, or you can tell it to create multiple code paths and to provide code that checks the architecture at runtime, and then it chooses the correct code path based on that architecture. Uh, you can do that with some compiler switches, and the compiler just does the rest for you. But sometimes you want to, you might want to have more control over the process, or you might just want to know how the process works. So let's look at that today. Uh, the Intel uh, Intel assembly language includes an opcode called CPU ID, and this is a general purpose uh, opcode for determining. Uh, different features present in the in whatever processor it's running on. So it, it's really irrelevant what processor you're using when you compile your application. So the way this thing works is you do some inline assembly. Now Intel Intel has a lot of what are called intrinsics where you can call directly call assembly language uh, opcodes directly in your C or C++ code. But for this one they don't provide an intrinsic so we just do inline assembler. And the way you do it is you call the CPU ID, but first you you uh, move into uh, the EAX and ECX uh, some different numbers. And based on what those numbers are, you're telling the CPU ID what different features you want to check for. Now it's a big, huge list, and I don't really have time to go through the whole thing here, but I did uh, provide some references for you. First of all, um, I created a couple bit.ly links. Um, one is to where I got this routine itself, this routine called get CPU ID info. I didn't write this. I found it in some in, uh, Intel uh, documentation, and I created a link there so you can see that. It's bit.ly slash SSE41. And then if you want to see all the possibilities for the CPU ID, uh, go to bit.ly slash Intel Arc, Intel A-R-C-H. And it's a full architecture document, and inside there, you can see everything uh, for what you pass for EAX and what you pass for ECX. Now let's scroll down into this code here. I created a CPU ID info, which is really just a, a structure to hold the data it get, gets back. It's just uh, uh, maps directly to the registers. And uh, then we call our function. And for this first time I use it, I'm going to just pass 0 and 0 for the two parameters for EAX and ECX. And what that'll do is it'll tell me if it's a genuine Intel processor. If it is, I'll get back a string that says genuine Intel with the characters uh, spread out through three different registers, EBX, ECX, and EDX. And so what I do is I copy those into a character array and then I print out the character array and see if it says genuine Intel. Uh, let's go ahead and try that real quick. I'm going to comment out this code down here, which I'll show you in a minute what it does. And we run this. Okay, now, full disclosure here, I had to pause this for the video for a minute because I had an error and it took me a minute to realize what I was doing wrong. Uh, I forgot to mention uh, when you, in order to use this effectively, you need to set up uh, x64. I was set to x32. I had previously set it to x64 when I put this together, but my setting didn't get saved, and so I was receiving some errors. So make sure it's x64, and then when you run it, you should compile just fine. And there we go, it says Genuine Intel. Now I'll sh show you in a minute what all these uh, bits are here. The next step is I call get CPU ID, and this time I passed a 1 and a 0. And when you do that, you'll get back a whole bunch of bits set for the different features that are present. And just to, so that we can see all those bits, I used a bit set 32, uh, which is a, a template up here in the bit set, um, one of the standard templates. And I use that to output the uh, bit version of those three registers. And all those correspond to different feature sets. Now, we could dig down in there and look up in that document I pointed to earlier. But I do want to show you another way we can accomplish this. Although Intel didn't give us an intrinsic, they did give us a set of functions called 
may I use CPU feature, or sorry, it's a single function with a set of features. And what you do is you pass in a different feature and you can determine at runtime, remember, if the processor you're running on has that feature. So this is another way you can do it. You can look at all the bits or you can do it this way. So here I'm going to determine whether I can use AVX. Now, because we're using Visual Studio here, you can type in feature or sorry, underscore feature, underscore, and there's the whole list of all the different ones that it recognizes. It pulled this from the header file uh, for, for the IntelliSense, and we're going to look for a feature ABX. And if we have it, it'll say yes, and if not, it'll say no. And I know this processor does have ABX, so let's make sure of that. <clears throat> and here it says we have ABX, so it worked. So basically that's it. You can call CPU ID and you can check the individual bits if you want and to find out which bits go to that document I pointed you to or just call the May I Use CPU features. And that's all there is to it.